Hi everyone, I'm Amy and welcome back to my kitchen here at Little Spoon Farm. In today's video, I am sharing my recipe for sourdough pizza crust with you. This is a very easy recipe to put together, so it's perfect for anyone that's just starting out with sourdough baking and uh, even for people that have been baking for a long time. This recipe only has a few steps that you need to do in order to get it ready to bake with. And I'm going to show you how you can use your cast iron skillet or any oven safe skillet that you have to start this pizza off on your stove and then finish it in the broiler or under the broiler in your oven. And with this method, it's very easy to get the pizza into the oven and you get a very nice crispy charred bottom and also the top of the crust is charred as well. Um, a lot of these recipes that you see for pizza dough have, uh, they, they make more than one pizza. This recipe will make four eight inch pizzas. And I know that sometimes you don't want to have that much pizza dough. So you can have this recipe if you wanna make two eight inch pizzas or one large pizza, or I will show you how to take the pizza dough and kind of uh, half cook it and that way you can stick it in the freezer for later and just kind of use it like a frozen pizza where you put your toppings on and heat it back up. So that way there's no waste. So let's go ahead and get started and make some pizza. So the night before you want to make your pizza, you will go ahead and start making your dough. So add the water, and the sourdough starter to a bowl and stir it up to distribute the starter evenly. Add your salt. And then I use 50 grams of whole wheat flour and 450 grams of all-purpose flour, but you can use um, all all-purpose flour if you want to. You'll add some olive oil and then go ahead and uh, thoroughly mix that using your hands get everything nice and incorporated and then go ahead and cover it up and let it sit on your counter overnight. So when you wake up in the morning, you'll want to go ahead and perform one set of stretch and folds. So to do this, you just wet your hand and then pick up the dough from underneath on one side and pull it up and stretch it over itself until you have turned that bowl full circle. So this is usually about four to five of these. Once you're done, just go ahead and cover that up again and stick it in the fridge until you're ready to bake. So um, about an hour before you wanna bake, I would take the dough out of the fridge and let it sit on the counter to start to come to room temperature and then divide the dough uh, depending on how many pizzas that you want. At this time, we're going to go ahead and shape each portion into rounds, so um, tight balls. So you just uh, pull the edges of the dough together underneath, flip that over, and then kind of twist and pull so that you kind of develop a little bit of a skin on top. And then once you're done with these, uh, shaping these, you're gonna let them rest for, for about 30 minutes and that's gonna give the chance for that gluten to relax. And that way, when you go to shape it into your pizza crust, it will uh, be a little bit easier to shape. So just go ahead and make sure the, the uh, surface is floured while these are resting so they'll, they'll be easy to move around once they're ready to go. And then I just use a flour towel or a tea towel to cover those up while they rest over the next 30 minutes. So when you're ready to go ahead and bake this pizza, you will take your cast iron skillet and you will start heating it up on your stove over medium heat. You're gonna want that cast iron skillet to be pretty hot whenever you put the pizza crust on it. And you're also gonna want to turn your broiler on high, the broiler in your oven. So take that pizza dough and you're gonna shape it into a pizza crust. And this might take a few minutes to do, and you can see the, the dough kind of wants to spring back. And if that happens to you, 
I would let the dough rest just a little bit longer and you can keep coming back and stretching it out, but it's just that gluten tightening up. So it just needs to be able to relax. And this is a quarter of the dough. So this is gonna make about an eight inch pizza. And just use a little bit of flour to keep it from sticking to your hands. I'm kind of using the weight of the dough to uh, let itself stretch out that way. But if you have any tips on stretching out pizza dough that you can leave in the comment section below, I'm sure other people would appreciate it. But this just takes a little patience and a little practice. Lift that crust up and just uh, gently lay it into that smoking hot pan. Now this is going to start cooking that pizza crust right away. So you're gonna to wanna to have your toppings ready to put on the pizza and just choose whatever you like. We like chicken and pepperoni and fresh mozzarella and uh, fresh basil on our pizza, but pizza is whatever you make it. So use whatever you like. Now you see the bottom of that crust, how nice and charred looking that is. That's what we're looking for. Go ahead and carefully with some gloves, transfer this hot cast iron skillet underneath that broiler and keep an eye on it because it's only going to take about two to four minutes. It doesn't take very long. And look at that melted cheese, how it has a little bit of that char on top and the, the crust is nice and golden and just, oh, it is so delicious. Use a spatula to transfer the pizza from the cast iron skillet to either a cutting board or a piece of parchment paper where you can cut it and go ahead and serve it because your pizza is done. Now look at the bottom of this pizza. I mean, that is what we are going for, right? So do you see how easy that was to make? We didn't need a pizza stone or a special pizza uh, peel to you know, get the pizza off onto it, to the pizza stone in the oven. You simply just use your cast iron skillet and you're gonna have a delicious crispy sourdough pizza crust. So if you have extra dough, that dough can stay in the fridge up to probably about 24 hours before it's gonna start, you know, kind of getting maybe a little bit wonky to bake with. I'm sure it'll still taste delicious, but um, I would say if maybe bake uh, half of it one day and half of it the next day, if you're not gonna bake all of it at one time. But another thing that you can do is press out those pizza rounds and go ahead and lay them into the cast iron skillet over that medium heat and let it cook for about five minutes. Then take it with no toppings on it at all and put it under the broiler for about one to two minutes. And what that's gonna do is it's going to cook it, but it's, it's gonna leave you some room for when you take this out of your freezer and put your toppings on, it's gonna leave room to go ahead and bake the rest of the way and kind of crisp up this crust and that way you don't waste any of your pizza dough. So I would take this out and preheat the oven to about 400 and then go ahead and put your toppings on and you can still put this right in your cast iron skillet if this is what you have to cook it in. Or if you do have some type of pizza stone, you could cook it directly on that. But again, this is just a way that you can have some for later um, and not waste anything. So I hope that you make the most delicious pizza that you've ever had and let me know how you like it in the comment section below. If you want more sourdough recipes, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Give me a thumbs up and visit our website at littlespoonfarm.com. All of our recipes, we include the metric measurements and the US customary measurements. So if you don't like weighing your ingredients, you can go and it has a little button that you press and that will convert it into cups, tablespoons, and things like that. So you don't have to have a kitchen scale if you still wanna bake sourdough goods. So until next time, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.